Well, I want, want to talk about winter rye for whitetails and how powerful it can be in a number of different ways for your food plot systems this year. Now, why winter rye instead of wheat? If you can't find winter rye, then I'd buy wheat as a substitute. But winter rye will germinate in colder temperatures. They found down to 37 degrees down at Michigan State University. It grows in the lowest pH level and the lowest fertility levels out of any potential food plot seed out there. Much worse conditions than wheat, of course. Wheat needs heavier soils, better soils. Um, much worse conditions that it can grow in compared to oats too. So winter rye, volume, speed of growth, temperature of germination and growth. A lot of factors for using winter rye, and especially if you have poor soils. So winter rye can be a fail safe and we'll talk about that. But for right now, I'll talk about why we're using winter rye this year in my food plots. These food plots right here, initially planted 50 pounds of oats per acre, 100 pounds of peas and 25 pounds of beans. We have a really good covering in here all over the place. We plant those first because oats deer will eat when they're older compared to wheat or rye. So you can plant them earlier, but you don't want to plant 100 pounds per acre and have it take over your better candy uh, forages of peas and beans. So I'm putting a light amount of oats so they don't overtake the peas and beans. And then four to six weeks later, that we did this last weekend, Rich and I, my hunting buddy, um, we came in here and we planted 200 pounds of rye right over the top of this side of the plot on the oats, peas, and beans. We just layered it right on with a handheld broadcaster. Rich found that Earthway Model 2750 bag spreader works outstanding. I've been using those for almost 20 years now and pretty easy to pour the rye in and just get going. You don't have to worry about a bucket filling an ATV spreader very fast. We did this, this stuff pretty quick, quickly out here and he had to use a cheaper one. Was, I don't remember what brand, I'm not even gonna say, but they don't work as well, they break, they can't hold as much seed. So Earthway 2750 is the best bag spreader I've found on the market. And we spread that rye out here. We spread it at a time where it's not gonna compete with the forage that's already grown, but it's gonna fill in these holes. So anywhere it's a light spot, but we plan for it to be light. We plan for the deer to hit the peas and the beans pretty quickly. And then we have that army of forage rye foraging opportunity, thick sod base of heavy rye coming in to save the day and actually continue the amount of browse pressure on this side of the plot. While on the other side, Nebraska is growing rape, radish, and turnip. A lot of people don't realize that that's what brassica means. It's not just rape, it's not turnip, it's radish. They're all in the same family. We have a brassica blend over there. You always want five or six different varieties. We have that from Northwoods Whitetails out there. You can check them out. It's a Sweet Feast brassica blend. I've used it for seven years. So um, they, it, it's a great mix. And one thing I'll add real quick. So we're using it for layering over here. We're not putting the rye in the brassica side initially. We do not want the rye to compete with the brassica. It'll stunt the brassica. And so we want that brassica coming in clean and pure. But that brings up another use for rye. If the brassica has been over browsed, if it didn't grow because of drought, whatever, the ha whatever happened with it that it didn't grow, then right now, Labor Day weekend in Southwest Wisconsin, we would have been adding 200 pounds of rye over on that side if we didn't have a brassica crop. And then I probably would have followed up with another 100 pounds towards the end of October if needed, further layering the rye and making sure I had that thick sod base. You can really pull out a salvage on any of your plots. I, there's gonna be tens of thousands of you out there that had bean plot fails going into the hunting season because they browse them down to the dirt. Don't be worried about it. Put 200 pounds of rye down right now in early September, put 100 pounds more down the end of October and enjoy the season. You don't need those beans if they're down to the dirt not a big deal. Yeah, you fed the deer all summer at a time when they, when they didn't really need it, but now they need that green, get that rye, and that can actually do just as much or more, of course, than the stunted you know, stems of uh, soybeans, but you can actually add a lot of volume. So we're using this as a layering technique here. You can use it as a fail safe on whatever plot you have. And in northern areas where you put out, uh, you can put out five acres of beans, and I've seen in a northern wooded section with just a third as many deer as we have around here, they eat it down to the dirt by October 1st. And so no food plot. In those areas, you're better off just starting the most browse tolerant forage you can plant is winter rye. So in those cases, what I developed many years ago, 
uh, going back 15 to 20 years, is layering rye. If you look up layering rye on whitetails, that's another one of my original concepts and original habitat practices that I developed with a lot of ex uh, experimentation and practice long ago. And so if you look up layering rye, you add in a northern section like that, you might put 100 pounds of rye down mid-August. Mid three to four weeks, weeks later, you put another 100 pounds of rye. And three to four weeks later, you put another 100 pounds of rye. What you're doing is you're filling space this way. You're filling it horizontally. You're not trying to get optimum growth this way. So a great way to use rye in northern sections where you have high browse pressure. It might even be a small food plot. That you have a quarter acre kill plot that you want to have out in the woods somewhere and you know the deer are going to ravage it if you put beans in or even peas, late planted beans, clover, leave it down to the dirt and it's good for nothing. Layering rye, winter rye is a great option. Now I want to clarify a couple things. I'm talking about winter rye. It looks like brown rice. We're going to show pictures of it. Dylan will, or we've already spread it out here, a lot of it. It's about the size of brown rice. It's not like grass seed where it's a sliver. Typically, we had to pay this year. It was a little high this year. It was $18 for a 50 pound bag. So $36 for 100 pounds. A lot of times, uh, rye grass, which you do not want to add in your plots by any means. Don't buy seed that has it in it already. That's really bad stuff and you don't want it in your plant plots, but it looks like a little sliver. And so that little sliver um, will cost you $35 for a 50 pound bag. So much more expensive than winter rye, fall rye, annual rye, rye grain, whatever they call it. You want it to look like that little brown piece of rice and you'll have the right rye for the mix. There is a huge difference. You do not want rye grass. One is an annual, that's the winter rye that's we're planting. It only lives till next year. And then, and we want to mow it out or kill it next spring. And then rye grass is a perennial that can last for 10 years and be a noxious weed in your food plot. Another thing, rye or wheat or oats does not mix with brassica. You do not plant those at the same time. Rye will take and wheat will take from the brassica planting any type of rape, radish, turnip. It'll take from that, it'll take nutrients for it. A lot of times it starves it out. And I know there's mixes out there that have those two in it, but that is not a good mix. There, I talked about seven food plot fillers and fads, and that's a big one. If you have rye or wheat and oats mixed with brassica seeds, that is a horrible combination. Don't buy it. They're just putting seed in the mix to get you, the consumer, to buy it. We figured this stuff out 20 years ago, 15 years ago. They don't mix. Um, rye, you're going to look at, like in, say, a Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, New York, Minnesota, even into northern Iowa, northern Illinois, northern Indiana, Ohio. The perfect time to plant rye is around Labor Day, depending on where you're at. If you're in southern Ohio, maybe you plant that first or second week of September. If you're in northern Michigan, if you're just planting rye, oats, wheat, you'd plant that at the end of August. Brassica, you plant the end of July to early August. Completely different timing for the two. You want the timing of rye and oats and wheat to be later because you want it to be shorter. If it gets too tall, they don't eat it, the, the rye or wheat. It stems out, it's too stemmy. So that's one great reason why you don't want to mix the two together. And then also brassica, you want to plant end of July and August. So if you plant at the time for rye and wheat, you're already too late in a lot of areas to plant brassica, and I'll get to that in a second. And if you plant at the timing rye and wheat and oats at the brassica timing, the end of July, then the brassica, or the wheat and rye and oats get so tall that the deer don't like it and it shades out and competes your brassica. Separate the two. Four to six weeks apart is appropriate. Together is not appropriate in any way. And you have to look at it. They really compete with the two together. They are at a completely different timing. And when you talk about fertility levels, like this side right here, I'm not even putting fertilizer on this year. This had tillage radish in it, 50% of my mix. So there's free nitrogen that traps down there. We have the buckwheat that we turn, that we actually smash right over the seed. So we have that dead decaying buckwheat. So I'm putting nutrients back in the soil with the constant crop rotation. So I don't fertilize this portion. I fertilize and, and meticulously take care of my brassica over there. If you lose the first six weeks, of brassica on your plot, you're losing 18 inches of growth and on a plant that only grows 30 inches, you're not losing on the front side, you're using it on the back side. It takes four, six, eight inches for that first month. And then the second and third month of brassica growth, you're gonna get it up to 30, 36 inches on good soil. And 
that last month you're going to grow and that middle month you're going to grow 12 to 15 inches and so if you're missing six weeks on the front side of brassica planting and you're waiting to plant at the perfect timing for rye and wheat then you're losing 15 to 18 inches of growth i hope that makes sense completely different timing spread the two apart rye is a very powerful tool and you could extend that to wheat a little bit too both not oats but wheat or rye is green going into the spring and they'll be green on these plots in the form of winter rye before anything greens up around here. Two to four weeks before spring green up, that will be the only thing green out here. Alfalfa will come along two or three weeks after spring green up. Clover about the same time as spring green up. This rye will be available two to four weeks before spring green up. The only green thing in the woods the deer can eat. It's very important for bucks that are exiting the winter, for does that are about to have fawns, and so you're giving the, the deer a great shot of nutrition and food right before they need it the most, right at a time they need it the most for replenishment of the winter time and right before they're growing antlers, growing fawns and lactation rates for fawns and, uh, and for those nursing mothers. So think about how powerful this green could be, sometimes wheat too, and you'll have a great season using winter rye this year and beyond.